Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I am once again joined by the amazing Brian Saponis. Brian, how you doing today, man? Doing well. Thanks so much for having me back on. Oh, dude, this is such an honor. I The minute I got off with you guys last time, I immediately emailed him. I was like, I got to bring you guys back on for my first horror movie. This was insane. So uh, just a little bit of a refresher, because it's been a little bit since you've seen Brian. Um, he's been a couple different professions uh, before becoming an actor, um, worked in the always exciting financial service industry, um, and spent most of the decade pursuing professional volleyball um, over in Norway, Switzerland, and Ireland. And we talked about this last time and how amazing that is. But, you know, the the less, we didn't really get to talk much about it because I wanted to keep it more about the both of you. But the lessons that you learned from volleyball, you know, the the conditioning, the strength, uh, the determination, is that something that really helped you in becoming an actor? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, absolutely. There, there's so many life lessons that you learn, just the, the, the whole discipline the, the determination that the stick to itiveness for lack of a better term that you know if you want something bad enough you need to go after it and and just never take no for an answer and keep going you fall on your face get back up and get right in there so there's a lot of things to learn from that and see that it's so amazing because like that's what i was you know the drive the determination the grit uh pro athletes and um athletes in general i shouldn't say pro athletes athletes in general and actors, it's kind of the same thing because you're always constantly practicing. You're always watching tape to get better. You're always trying to make these steps to become the best you can be in your field. And so, I, like I said, I wanted to spend a little more time talking about that today because last time I talked about just how fucking cool it was that you were a professional volleyball player. Like, that's super dope. But, you know, um, to be able to take that type of training and morph it into acting. Because acting, once again, once you're on a job, it's – full-blown to the wall studying working watching film reading scripts memorizing while a lot of it's more mental you're still pre preparing for every single match or every single scene when you're an actor so uh, the the dynamics between the two and how similar they are i think it's actually pretty amazing when you sit down and really think about it it, it is i agree with it. The, the one thing there there's a there, there's a little bit of a difference though in in terms of uh, of sports versus acting i guess if you will because with sports and 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 pursuing that career, I know when I when I worked this hard and I did these things, I would get this. Mm -hmm. With acting, I could work this hard and do these things and never see anything from it, you know, because there's so many variables that are out of my control. Uh, whether I I don't know the right people or I'm not in the right place at the right time, so you could be the the, the best actor in the world and never work a day in your life. Unfortunately, a lot of times just because of circumstances or whatever. Um, so yeah, there 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 are definitely similarities, but there there is some certain differences. Absolutely, and especially with movies, like you said, trying to get to where you want to be. Once you get there, it's a team sport. But yes. trying to get there is very individualized and is very competitive you know, a singles race, if you will. Um, but luckily for us, you know, you've been acting full time, um, 11 years in Hollywood, um, which again, amazing, you know, lasting 11 years doing what you love. Um, but then in 2019, you co-founded Red Slate Films and you've taken on additional roles as producer, director, editor, writer. You were like, you know, this cap has a couple spaces in it. Let's fill those spaces up. So um, obviously we know that we have some new films coming up for you. So what do you have coming down the pipeline that you can still talk about? Uh, well, the, the, the big one that, uh, we're in the, the midst of, uh, as we talked a little bit about before, uh, is grind We're we're, uh, in the final throes of, uh, of our, uh, Indiegogo campaign, it's going really well. And, and that's going to be filming later this year. Um, there's that. And then with, on the red slate side, we're going to be gearing up for a, a crime drama that we're doing. Actually, we're going to do a, a little short film version proof of concept later this year, and then parlay that into a feature, uh, at some point next year. Um, and then there's another film I, I, I'm going to be doing called the Wolf Boy, which is up in, up in Connecticut, uh, another werewolf film. I got my werewolf all shirt on tonight for that, but, uh, Another werewolf film that I get to get to be a part of. Not not playing a werewolf this time. I'm actually playing a, a, a police person, so uh, should be a lot of fun. So yeah, there's there's definitely uh, several things in the works, um, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be a fun year. 
And you guys should already be doing this from the grind video. But if you didn't see the grind video and you're seeing this for the first time, I do have all of Brian's social media links down in the description. So that's the best way for you to be able to keep up to date on all the things that he's going to be working on and the best way you're going to know the release dates for the things that he does have done. So um, we talked about grind last time a little bit, and I'm very excited about it. You guys gave us a really big insight. I do have that video linked in the description. If you didn't get to see it, you'll get a whole deep dive into what's going on in the upcoming grind film. So um, in order for you to be doing these horror films and be a part of the horror community, horror had to start for you somewhere, Brian. So now I would like to go back to the past and talk about what it was that got you started in the horror genre, your first horror movie. And Brian, the first horror movie you watched was? Uh, Poltergeist. Yeah, I was. Uh, that came out, what, 82? I was about 10 when that came out. And, uh, you know, you're watching that as, as, a, as a kid, and you're just like, oh, my God. It's, even though it's PG, it's funny. It's a PG movie. I'm looking at it like, oh, that came out today. Probably rated R. I don't know. There's some things in there. I'm like, eh. But, uh, yeah. Easily PG-13, if not R. <laughs> but, you know, Easily Poltergeist PG is uh, quite a special movie in this household as well. Um <laughs> There you go. So, Love it. Uh, it. It's a movie that I, re you know, you go and you look at what, what Toby Hooper and Steven Spielberg were able to do in this film. Yeah. I'll always say it was, you know, I look at this just like how, you know, Jordan Peele's uh, Candyman. No, it's Nia DaCosta's Candyman. Jordan Peele produced it. Uh, this, this is Toby Hooper's Poltergeist. Okay. And I'm going to die on that hill that this is Toby <laughs> uh, Hooper's Poltergeist. But uh, we know you were about 10 when you'd watched it for the first time, Brian. But do you remember who you were with the first time you had seen it? No, I it just no. It's fine. I, I'm, I'm sure it was with my mom or dad. It was at, at home, but uh, it was just you, the, when 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 she's in front of the TV. You know they're here, and then the, the, the you know when the, when the corpses come up through the swimming pool, and it's like oh my god, you know I'm never going to go swimming again. It's kind of like when you know Jaws. You see Jaws first time. I never want to go in the ocean again. Be attacked mm -hmm. by sharks. You know I never want to go in a swimming pool again. But. Uh, yeah, and, and of course the, the the creepy dude that comes to the door, and I mean, there's so many parts in that when you watch it, it's like, oh my God, anything else? Oh, oh yeah, there's more. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Well, we're just getting started. Just getting um, started. And you know that's the perfect segue because I think that, like you said, if this film came out today, it would at least have a PG-13 at the yeah. very least. Um, oh. I remember catching this for the first time on like Fox 36 Toledo at two o'clock on a Sunday because it was a PG movie, and just being like, what the fuck am i watching this is terrifying so um do you remember which scene it was that affected you the most oh man i you know i, I think one of the ones uh, when when the, the the little boy was in his room with that that joker doll right and he's looking at it in the corner and he's kind of like and then all of a sudden the, the, the doll disappears and he's like where is it and of course he he goes under the bed to find it and you know the, the thing as a kid i'm in the room like oh my god you know i don't want to go in my closet i don't look under my bed i don't i don't yeah. I just don't want to <laughs> and what i love about that moment is you have that split second of gratification of him pulling up that sheet and there's nothing there and you're nothing like all right, right cool right. and then he sits up and it's behind him and wraps yeah. around him like you're like damn <laughs> like, you faked <laughs> me out like you totally threw me a curveball there for a second thinking everything was going to be okay and um this movie has i think another reason it stood the test of time is because of the curse of poltergeist you know all the crazy sad things that happened on set and afterwards to some of our actors and actresses and you know like the using the real skeletons in the pool like you were talking about and um you know there's an amazing documentary if you guys haven't seen it it's on shutter it's called cursed films and they do a really deep dive into some of these films that are considered cursed and um it, it's a great watch guys i can't recommend it enough they had the exorcist on there they did the twilight zone movie poltergeist is one of them and the the way they do these deep dives it's very respectful um they, they just try to show you that a lot of these things can be explained by crazy people, not a curse, you know. And they do a thing on there about how real skeletons at the time were cheaper than fake skeletons. You know, all those <laughs> movies you watched back then, they all used real skeletons. And nobody said a thing about it until the Poltergeist one. So um, we know which scene it was that affected you the most. And a lot of us were scared by, oh, you know, clowny clown clown there in the bed. But um, what would you say your favorite scene from Poltergeist is? Oh, boy. Well, I mean, just you, you got the iconic scene with, with, with uh, Caroline in front of the TV, you know, and, mm. and, and that's that's kind of when you think of Poltergeist, that's what you're thinking about. And uh, those are always good when she's going in front of the TV and the static and everything. And it's like the, the, the Poltergeist is coming out and all that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's just a fun 
looking back on now it's, it's a fun it's a fun entertaining film. And, and you know because ghost hunting and everything is so big these days every time you turn on tv shows there's another paranormal ghost hunting show so you know yeah kicked off well, kind and, of let's look at let's look for ghosts and, and the thought really i've always said that and this is just me personally my personal favorite horror movies are dramas that are wrapped up in horror and this is at the heart at the you know the meat and potatoes of this movie it's a family drama Right, you know? exactly. Exactly. You you fall in love with the parents, you know, you fall in love with the damn dog. You, you know, like <laughs> and you, you love all these characters. And you really this movie is one of those movies that yes, it does start off kind of slow, but it starts off slow for the right reasons. It's building up your character development, it's introducing you to the characters, it's making you fall in love with the characters. So you genuinely don't want anything bad to happen to them. I mean, you even have funny moments in the film, like when they're on the same remote system. So they're trying to change the channel and the neighbor's kids are trying to watch Mr. Rogers. And they're trying to watch the football game and they're having the, you know, the remote wars in there. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's, I, I, and I remember splicing cable with our neighbors when we were young, you know, like that, we all did that type of shit. So, um, you know, we know what your favorite scene is. We know what scene affected you the most, but Poltergeist now is a part of a franchise. You have the first three in the trilogy of Carol Ann. I'll call it the Carol Ann trilogy. And then you have the newest remake from 2015, I want to say, is when it was. Um, since it is a franchise, I always ask, um, have you seen every movie in the franchise? And if so, which one is your favorite? I, I have not. No, I've, I've only seen the first one. I just, it just you kind of hear about the other ones. It's like, I don't know if I really wanted to see them. And, and I, I definitely haven't seen the latest one at all. But I, I've only seen the first one. So, see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a hot take here. <laughs> Uh, the first one is my third favorite in the franchise, um, and that's not a that's not a knock on it. Um, no. The third the third one will always be my favorite. The third one is just super special to me. The second one is my second favorite. Then you got the original. Then you have the remake is not, is my least favorite. Um, but and I've talked about this on the podcast before, guys. But I always feel like when I talk about Poltergeist, it's super important to talk about this because of how special it is. Uh, when they went in to do the remake, as we all know. During the filming of Poltergeist 3, Heather O'Rourke, who played Carol Ann, lost her life because of a medical misdiagnosis with a bowel obstruction. Um, when they went into the writing process, they said this girl will not be named Carol Ann. She will be the polar opposite of Carol Ann. She will have dark hair, dark eyes. Uh, we're going to name her Maddie, Madison, uh, out of respect to Heather O'Rourke. They're like, you know what? She was Carol Ann. She is Carol Ann. She forever will be Carol Ann. We're not going to try to recast her. And that got a lot of emotional points for me because I felt like that was the right thing to do for this young lady whose legacy should be cemented as Carol Ann. So if you do get the chance, though, brother, you got to check out Poltergeist 3. That shit is so dope. Now that you you put it that way, I absolutely want to check out the check them, check them out. So without yeah. question. Um, and like I said, part three is just I think it's the scariest. Like it takes place in a high rise in Chicago and it's. Hi. It's it's a scary film, man. There's scenes that just like it, it rocked me. Um, I, that's all I'll say. It's it's a special movie to me. But my kid sister also looks a lot like Heather O'Rourke. So growing up, that's why Poltergeist was so special to me and my sister because my, she looks just like Heather. And as a kid, she had the red zip up pajamas. She had the you know the toe head blonde hair. So yeah. Yeah. that was like yeah, I, I'm sold <laughs> on these movies. Um, nice. so um, you know, we talked about the remake a little bit, but you know, being that. It is a franchise. You haven't seen the rest. We can't really talk about the remake too much. So we know about your first horror movie being Poltergeist, Brian, and what that movie means to you. But here for a second, I do want to throw you a little bit of a curveball. Um, my little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Brian? Uh, what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Oh, boy. Uh, good gravy. That, you put me on the spot there. Um Yeah, I'm trying to think of some. There's, I, I was always kind of not really partial, but I mean, I, I like the character of like, like, like Jason from Friday the Thirteenth. You know, it, the, a lot of the movies are just they're really not that good, but you know, I I do like the character of Jason. The funny thing is, like, my kid, he's collect he's he's never really seen horror films, but he's collecting all these horror characters. He's got like ten Jasons. He's got the the, the Pennywise. He's got the Michael Myers. You got the Freddy Kruegers. You know, I keep going back to the 80s, like you got Diamond Elm Street. You mm -hmm. know, I wasn't the biggest fan of Halloween. Um, never never kind of really got into that. Um I knew I liked you. 
<laughs> I just don't, I don't get it, you know? Ha Halloween's not, look, and, and this is no disrespect to Halloween, because I look at Halloween the same way I look at the band Kiss. Um, it's not for me. I'm not a huge fan of it, but you cannot deny the impact it has. Um, <laughs> Halloween fans are so into their films. They know every, just like Kiss fans, they'll dress up as the guys. They know all, you know, the whole catalog, uh, respect, much respect. But I came into Halloween a little bit late in the game. Um, I didn't see the first couple Halloween movies till I was a teenager and I had already been watching Child's Play, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, you know, and then I see this guy with a white mask, just, you know, stab, stab. And I'm, it's boring. It's slow. It's yeah. boring. Um, but I mean, I respect it. Like I said, huge respect for it. It's Ashley's favorite franchise. I have a love for it. I have a soft spot for it, but. I wouldn't even put it in my top ten, five favorite franchises. So I, I'm with you there. And I, I'm I'm with you on Kiss. Although if you talk to my wife, she's a big Kiss fan. I'm like, <laughs> I, I can't get into Kiss. I can't get into Halloween. You know, the funny thing is I'm thinking, my, my favorite horror, horror movie, I'd have to go with Aliens. Run it. The second one, right? Aliens? Yes. Actually, no. I, Alien. I'm sorry. Alien. First one. Alien. First, first one? The first one. Dude, love it. Um, I've seen them all. Like I've seen all Alien, Aliens. And, you know, I've got the whole the whole set. So, but the Alien, yeah, I keep forgetting about the S. Alien, <laughs> it's it's a special movie, man. Right. Um, it's, it's fantastic and it's terrifying. And Sigourney Weaver is the perfect final perfect. girl in that movie. You know, yeah. like, um, and I'm with you. I think the first three Alien movies are fantastic. Perfect. Three. Three, ha you know, there, there's some things about it that I'm not a huge fan of, but it's still great. If the worst movie in your trilogy is Alien Three, you're fucking, you're laughing all the way to the bank. Exactly, and I love, I love Lance Henriksen as Bishop. I mean, I just, I just love that character he creates. It's just oh so yeah. Cool. yeah, nice little twist there with him too. You know, I did not see that coming when I was a kid. Yeah, it is true. That is true. No, but that's you know. yeah. The aliens, uh, that's that, that's terrifying. I mean, you watch it. It's God, it's, it's so good. So, so good. And we got, you know, now this year we got Fede Alvarez doing Alien Romulus, which takes place in between, chronologically, in between Alien and Aliens. So oh, okay. kind of a prequel um, that will be coming out later this year. And Fede Alvarez, you know, did Don't Breathe. He did the Evil Dead remake. Um, very excited to see what he can do with an Alien movie. If he could take it back to that, you know, if he could mix Don't Breathe and Evil Dead, like the tension of being in a dark place and trying to escape – with the bloody, gory kills from Evil Dead, I'm going to be <laughs> sold 100%. I didn't know that. That's interesting. I didn't know about that. That's pretty good. Check that out. Yeah, I'm very – that's in my most anticipated of the year because I'm with you. I've, I've been a huge Alien fan. One of the few movies that when we watch it still to this day, we have the VHS. Um, this <laughs> is a movie that I've obviously upgraded to Blu-ray on it, but this sure. film is one of those films that just – it deserves to be watched with the graininess – because that's what it's about is the suspense, the graininess, and maybe I got to adjust the tracking a little bit here and there. But <laughs> it's worth it because Alien is such a dope-ass movie to still watch with that dark – don't, you don't need to 4K everything. When you no. brighten these movies up, it takes away from the suspense Absolutely. and stuff. So. After your audience posted, they're like, I don't know what this tracking – what is a VHS? What are you talking about? I don't know what this <laughs> – See, I was lucky, man. I, I I think I told you before, but I grew up in a video store. My mom and dad owned a mom and pop video nice. store. And yeah. it's just like, I I was very lucky growing up. I was very lucky. I'll never take that away from anything. So There's always um, something in the video store and uh, picking out an actual physical video, taking it home, should be kind of rewind, right? So. It's funny because my job when I was a kid was for those assholes that were not kind and did not rewind – I had a VCR rewinder. It wasn't yeah. even a VCR. It was just the old rewinding box. Yeah. And I would put it in, I'd rewind the tapes. Um, and it's funny because I, I didn't know that people didn't know about this. The original Rick Roll when we were young, because we had to watch the videos a little bit when they came back, because if somebody didn't like a movie, they would record over it with whatever was on local programming. So, like, somebody would come in to, watch, you know, rent, like, The Mask with Cher and come back and be like, why is the Channel 36 news on this fucking tape? Like, ah, oh, damn it. You know, like, it's funny now at the time it wasn't because we had to pay for those. You know, like, us as a store, like, we had to pay to get reimbursed on those. So, um, they had to go back and see who watched it last. Like, oh, damn tab. it, John Smith. <laughs> he had that little tab thing removed, though. They couldn't record over it. You know, he had to put yeah, tape. Yeah, remember you put tape over that tab, and you could just record over it again. Oh, right, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's like you couldn't even pop the tab anymore. Like, and it, yeah. damn it, <laughs> like people would. Like, yeah, like, what are you talking about tab? It was it was a, both a soft drink and a tab on the VHS. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When you pop that tab off, you weren't supposed to be able to record over that tape anymore. But people yeah. got smart. They would just put a piece of tape over that tab. You could just record over it again. So, man, yeah. like I said, I've had an amazing time talking to you about all these things, horror. And um, before I let you go, I always bounce back to the first horror movie. So in this case, Poltergeist. And what we're going to do here, Brian, is rank this movie on a skull count. Now, we're not ranking Poltergeist on acting production, score, direction, nothing like that. We're not being critics. What we're doing here, my dude, is we're ranking this movie on how much it affected you on your first viewing. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Brian, what would your ranking of Poltergeist be? I'd have to go, I'd have to go four. I'd have to go four. That's a fair ranking. I'd have to go four. And hopefully by the time this episode is released, I'll be able to let you guys know what he thought of Poltergeist 3. But if you want to know what he thinks about it, the best way to do that, because guys, we're at the end of the third act. The credits are about to roll and the curtain's about to drop. But not only can you find out what he thought about Poltergeist 3, but you can keep up to date on every single thing he has coming up for us down the pipeline, whether it's with Red Slate or whether it's with um, anything else he's working on here in the future, because you're going to want it's, it's not a one and done here. He's got so many things coming up the pipeline. You're going to want to be a part of these, whether it be Grind, whether it be the things with Red Slate. You want to follow him on social media so you can stay up to date, and those links are right down in the description. Um, Brian, please don't go anywhere, my friend. I have a couple more questions for you. Um, everyone else, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It helps to build the channel more than you know. And follow Sledgehammer Horror on social media. Our links are down in the description as well. But until next time, keep talking horror. Stay what you are, and we'll see you guys soon.